here at the Fast Lane Car are lucky enough to drive a different car every week. So, you may be wondering, what's the best car to drive when the snow starts falling? So, without further ado, here are the top six ski cars that we've driven this year. It's like a giant Subaru WRXSTI. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the top of the world. Well, at least just under 12,000 feet. That's right, we're at the top, the summit of Loveland Pass, Colorado, where we are reviewing the ultimate ski car. It's the 2012 Infiniti FX50 S. And the S stands for sport, which means it's got 390 horsepower and 21 inch wheels. Good God. Yeah, lots of bling. I love it. And I think it's the ultimate guilty pleasure. Let's show you why. You want speed and performance? This thing has it. It has 390 horsepower and it puts out 369 pound-feet of torque. See that? See that button I pushed? That's part of the continuous dampening control. Infinity has it as an option on the Sport and it allows you to firm up and loosen up the suspension at the push of a button. Works well. Nathan, these serpentines in Loveland Pass really do test the car's suspension and handling. What do you think? <laughs> it's awesome in this car. Um, think of it more of a sport wagon, or better yet, think of it as a rich man's WRX STI. That's right. It, well, it's not turbocharged, but it's got a lot of kick. And around the corners, this thing is badass. It really does kind of feel like a Subaru, but the right Subaru. You know, the S in this car does not stand for fuel savings because I know it gets a combined 16 miles to the gallon and going up this big pass, I bet you it's even worse. What are you getting, Nathan? <laughs> I have real-time MPG yeah. and I'm averaging between, say, seven and 10, maybe. You know, Nathan, for a ski car, this thing does not have a lot of room inside. Ah, oh, come on, it does. Come on, get in. Let's talk about how much I Oh, son oh, of a bitch. Oh. You know, it has this crazy low sloping roof line. Oh, yeah, it does. That hurt. But it looks cool, right? Yeah, and it hurts. <laughs> Let's check out the trunk. Oh, I don't know what Roman's talking about. This car has plenty of room. I'm, okay, the roof is a little low. A little low? You're crazy, man. This car has zero room back here for a SUV. Here, I'll show you. Let's see if you fit. I, well, I could probably <laughs> fit. You know, if you got... Hey, oh, come on. Whoa. Oh. Ow. Okay, uh, I don't fit very well. No, you don't fit. This thing is teeny tiny for a big, heavy SUV. It's a wagon. It's a sport wagon. Oh, yeah. My head hurts. Yeah, WRX STI, right. Roman, I mean, at this altitude, wouldn't it be cool to do zero to 60? <laughs> zero to 60, you realize that we're at 12,000 feet, which means that this car is now effectively down 120 horsepower, which means... Well, that means I guess that the WRX and the STI would whoop its ass. Because it has a turbo, and this, well, it's normally aspirated. So all you Flatlanders out there, consider yourself lucky. On a zero to 10 scale, zero being the Model T and 10 being an autonomous car, this car is a 20 because every time you get near a lane line, it just beeps. It's a 20 because it's so freaking annoying and it defaults to being on. I can't believe that they would make it think so much for itself that it would drive you so crazy. There it goes again. <laughs> Nathan, I would say this Infiniti competes with the BMW X6 the uh, ZDX, maybe Acura, and maybe the Range Rover Sport. Yeah. But for $66,000, you can get two WRX STIs. <laughs> yeah, you can, but you know what? If you've got the dinero, this is what you want. Trust me, it's a fun sport wagon. It's a guilty pleasure. So if you've got a lot of money and a big cigar, enjoy. Cigar, yeah!
bastard Roman told me to come up here in the most snow-worthy Nissan I could get for under 30 grand. And he wouldn't let me bring a pickup truck. Okay, so I didn't realize it was gonna be friggin' cold out here. It's not my fault, it's his. Up here at nearly 10,000 feet, having a turbocharged engine is a smart idea, and this Nissan Chook has a good one. <laughs> All right, be quiet. Nathan can't hear this. I set him up. There is obviously no more snow-worthy Nissan than the Xterra, which is what I'm driving. There might be a pickup, but I didn't allow that. So here is, by far, Nissan's most snow-worthy car, and Nathan is gonna lose. Style, oh. Okay, style. Stupid snow. It's not pretty. We know it's not pretty. Don't send this letter saying it's not pretty. Okay, I think I froze my hand to the car. It is a wonderful car to drive. I think this is one of the best looking cars that Nissan makes. Sure, it was introduced back in 2000, but that just means that it's been a success. It's rugged, it's manly, it's beefy. You feel like you're the king of the world driving it. It does have a 188 horsepower engine. It's a 1.6 liter, four cylinder engine. It's direct and injected, it has a turbocharger. Puts out 177 pound feet of torque. It's not bad, and it's a... CVT, I'm slipping again, and it's a CVT, and you know, it actually works half decent for a friggin' CVT. I've got a 261 horsepower V6 that puts out 281 pound-feet of torque. I could put a snow plow on this and still get through any snow drifts out there. It's a little tight in the back. Uh, oh, it's cramped! Oh. Okay, the... It's really not made for three people in the back, especially if you have kids. Um, that's the truth. But if you have someone who's really skinny, they could probably fit between a baby seat uh, and a booster. And for utility, you can't get much better than this vehicle. Plenty of room in the front seat, tons of room in the back seat, and plenty of room back here for me, my bike, and yes, even Nathan. Utility, it's there, but the reality is this is one of the smallest Nissans interior-wise that's being built and sold in our country. It's small. Of course, there's only one way to see which car is more snowworthy, the Xterra, and that's to drive up one of the country's steepest roads, Lick Skillet Road, and see which car is faster. And here comes Nathan. Nathan, you ready to go up Lick Skillet? Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, no, I'm not. On one condition, one condition. I'll go up that road. All right, what is that condition? that you drive the Jeep. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> All uh -huh. right, guys, let's do it, let's do it. All right. I have the stopwatch. And I have the juke. <laughs> All right, it's not as bad as you think, trust me. CVT! Now, shut up, okay, you ready? Three tires, come on, come on dude. I Three, oh. two, one, go! <sighs> Oh, come on. I hate to see you. Oh, yeah, oh. turbocharger. Oh, the turbo is nice. Yeah, you forgot about that, didn't you? I did forget about the turbo. But Nathan, I set this up, man. I've got snow tires. You this... set this up. That's the most important part. I did set up. This has, I don't know. Oh, gee, it's all over the place. <laughs> oh, I don't know, dude. And we haven't got the uh, steep part yet. Yeah, it, does, it does handle well, though. You really can feel what the wheels are doing. And the... Yeah, it's better than you thought, huh? Yeah, yeah. I took this thing around all over Boulder and Denver, Colorado in the snow and it did great. And it just has all season tires, unlike your snow tires. Uh oh, steep turn. Yeah, yeah oh. Nice. oh, that's not good. Oh, I don't want to dig this out of the snow. <laughs> Come on, go, go. It'll go, it'll go. It's just, it, <laughs> the problem is it's a CVT, just like a turbo has to spool up in its own way. It's 4,000 RPM and I'm not accelerating. Come on, come on. That's because your wheels are slipping. I can't turn. We're coming to the end. 5,000 RPM. Oh, this thing just does not sound like it wants to go fast, Nathan. I'm not saying it. Oh, oh the back. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> oh, that was spooky. <laughs> I think our oh. cameraman's about to get sick. <laughs> Almost went into a tree there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here comes the finish. Uh, it's getting so foggy, I don't know if we can see the finish. All right, come on, Juke. 5,000 RPM, give it all you got. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We have to get to the barrels. Here we go, here we go. Here comes There's the barrels. The barrels. Right here. Woo. What is it? Two minutes, eight seconds. Well, 208.3. All right. All right, well, we'll see how uh, you do in the Xterra.
Okay, I was actually really surprised, Nathan, at how well the juke did. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let's see how the exterior goes. You ready? Oh, yeah. Three, two, one, go. Oh, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> A lot more comfortable. <laughs> Look, let's face it, we're both big guys, and so having the little guy, you know, the Juke, it's, it's just not really built for big people. No, back here especially, the uh, Xterra has plenty of headroom, and I just feel like the stadium seating lets me see what's going on ahead of me, which is kind of scary right now, because you are flying up this hill, my man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, it, I mean, it's just different world, they're different vehicles, you know, I mean, you're talking about basically an economy car that has all-wheel drive versus a proper truck with a frame. Yeah, and I think most importantly, proper tires because I can <laughs> tell the huge difference between the all-season street tires. Right. And, oh, you almost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. okay. These mud and snow tires. Yeah, but I'm losing. We're going up really steep. How about the transmission? You like the traditional transmission more? I would rather have a stick, and this does have one available, thank God, but this one's pretty good. Yeah, CBT, I mean, come on. It's just, I don't really know any enthusiast who really likes this uh, continuously variable transmission. Yeah, especially not in an off-road vehicle, which the Juke is sort of, kind of. Dude, I got my foot to the floor. I'm sorry to cut you off, but <laughs> it doesn't want to go any faster. My foot is down all the way to the floor. Oh, 123, I think you went 208, so. I don't know, it's gonna be close. All right, here we come, we're getting to the end. 150, I went 208, it's gonna be much closer than I thought, Nathan. I got my foot all the way down. You got your foot. Just all right, here we go, here we go, stop. All right, what's the time say? 157. <laughs> <laughs> my cunning plan <laughs> backfired. Well, to a certain degree, I suppose it did. Okay, a lot of snow. It's Colorado, what do you expect? We set out to prove something, and it's not comparing these two. We wanted to show that for under $30,000, one company can build two vehicles that are really good in the snow. Country, truck, city, car. It's not bad. So Nathan, are you saying you're a city girl? Go to hell. <laughs> I guess I deserve that, because you did foil my cunning plan. Yeah, 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 I did, didn't I? I got to drive the Xterra, which is a lot more comfortable, and you got to drive the itty bitty little tiny juke. <laughs> which is a little bit itty bitty and tiny. As you can see, currently the setup is made for kids. Only a couple. If you have a really big kid, it's not such a great idea. Here's the funny part. <laughs> this car, its demographic is actually for guys, young guys. But you know who's buying them? Women. Moms. Moms, let me tell you something. You put a big kid in the back, you're gonna have to fold them like origami. Not a great idea. Little kids, A-okay. You know, Nathan, I don't think there is any danger of an avalanche today, and that's a shame because we need snow because we are testing the all new Audi All Road. Isn't that right, my man? Yeah, pretty sweet looking car too. And we're gonna tell you all about it, but here's the thing. It's the middle of summer in Colorado and half the state's on fire. Yes, and we need snow because this is the ultimate Audi ski car. Hey Nathan, nice A4 Avant. Oh, come I mean, on. that's what this is, right? Just a bunch of cladding on an A4. No, this is one of the few companies that actually has real cladding, real metal, and underneath, same thing. Best of all, it's not an A4, it's not an Avant. What it is, as an all-road, is a synergy of different cars. Underneath, an A5 gives it a wider track and allows them to lift it over seven inches. Yeah, so maybe it's a little bit taller of an A4 Avant, but here where it counts, it's the exact same. 211 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque out of this turbocharged four-cylinder. You know, you gotta give it up though for the fact that this is the award-winning two-liter that is in some of the best vehicles made today. Nathan, zero to 60 in the all new, all road, 211 horsepower. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. We got the solo DL. Let let her, yeah, let her go. Uh, so, so, turbo is working. Helps up here at altitude. And we're at 60. Oh my. 
9.89. Now there are of course three of us in this car now with the photographer. Three people in this car, so before you write your nasty letters, which you will anyway, three people. Three people. You know Nathan, it's funny, I just drove the old all road and this one feels like it's as roomy. Yeah, they're just about the same size. Only minor differences, but here's something interesting directly from Audi. They say this car gets better mileage, yet it's faster than the old all-road. That's really cool because this one is based on the A4 Avant, and that one was based on the A6. So like the previous all-road, there's not a lot of space back here. This is where Nathan drives. This is where my feet go. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. You know what? His legs are considered too long for most humans. Look, it's a small car. Don't think it's a big car. It's never a big car. This is a small car. So if you need more back seat space, I'd recommend a larger car. Ride and handling. We're one of the first programs who are going to be taking this baby off-road, which we're doing right now. And you know what? It's actually pretty good. In some ways, it's a little bit better than I anticipated. And in case you're wondering, we're getting 22.6, mostly on the highway, miles per gallon, which is okay for an all-wheel drive car at altitude. It's quiet, it's serene, it's competent. It doesn't seem to have any problems. Audi has put an eight-speed transmission in the new all-road which can be shifted manually using panel shifters. You gotta like eight speeds. I say, the more the merrier. The new steering system is an electromagnetic system, which seems to be okay. Not a whole lot of information coming through, but the weight is pretty good. All in all, it's an Audi. You know, Nathan, in terms of competition, I'm thinking Volvo cross country. Yeah, that's one. I'll tell you one, the Range Rover Evoque. The Range Rover Evoque, yeah, very similar demographic, certainly very similar type of car. There are some unique features on the all-road. First of all, it's got now what's become the signature LED lights. Uh, of course, the Avant has that as well, but these vertical grills, that is unique to the all-road. Yeah, but the body armor is also unique, and that's pretty cool. And look, it's only going to take a matter of time before everybody starts ripping off this particular design. You know, Nathan, I think a lot of people might be expecting the previous all-road. And if that's what you want, this ain't it. No, it's not. It's a smaller, tighter package in certain ways, and it just feels less complicated. It's an easier car to drive every day. And if you're looking for the ultimate ski car, buy an Evoke. As always, this is Roman. No, dude, Audi's going to hate us. I'm sorry, I couldn't Look help at it. the all-road. You know, Nathan, the old all-road, it had air suspension. It could actually lift itself up. What's different about this car? Well, you're leaning on it. Metal, baby, actual alloy. And we got a little friend, too, don't we? Yes, we do. But will he fit in the trunk? He's a stranger's dog, so I don't think we should lift him up and throw him anywhere. But the good news is, with these alloy roof, are these aluminum? Yeah. These aluminum roof rails, something kind of cool and something that harks back to the past because unlike some people I say this particular vehicle earns a little place in history and should be considered iconic. Yeah, iconic, schmiconic. As you probably know, Range Rovers are some of the most off-road worthy vehicles in the world. And we here in Colorado, after getting three feet of snow, wanted to know which Range Rover is the most off-road worthy. I'm driving the brand new 2012 Range Rover Sport and Nathan, well, he's driving the brand new... I'm in the Evoke, baby! So, <laughs> which one of these two cars is better in the snow? Oh, mine is. Come on! <laughs> We're going to go up to Gold Hill, Colorado and find out right now. Stick with us! <laughs> you are crazy! Wait.
Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner we have the reigning champion, the 2012 Range Rover Sport, weighing in well a lot. With 385 horsepower, this has years of dedicated and proven pedigree to make this the snowbound champ. Nathan, what do you got? This is the young contender. It is the all-new Range Rover Evoque. And this baby is packing 240 horsepower in a four-cylinder turbocharged engine. Now both tires are rated mud and snow, but if you look at the tread pattern, this <laughs> one has much more aggressive snow tires. This is more for the street. They're both 19 inches. So let's see which one is better when the snow gets deep. I'm okay. <laughs> It's apparently not a snow rover, Nathan. Hold on. Maybe a Range Rover, but it's not a snow rover. <laughs> Let me know when you want to push. <laughs> Hold on. Come on, baby. Oh, come on. Be a good girl to daddy. There you go. Now, straight back. Oh, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm invincible. Ah. I don't want to do that again. Let me show you how you do it in a proper Range Rover. <laughs> One with adjustable air suspension that can raise itself up yeah, with dude. proper mutt and snow tires. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure you're not going to have as much of a problem as I did, but you know what? It did do it. Yeah, come on, dude. It you did were... do it. It got out, you know? And despite my incompetent driving, it did it. You were like a tick's breath away from having me push you. Oh, no, 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 no. It would have been fine. I would have hired somebody else just so I could save the face. Nathan, is that a few inches of snow where you got stuck? That's actually pretty damn deep. That's like a foot or two. <laughs> or three. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'll show you deep, dude. Watch. Right. I will not even back up. I will just... I won't even use reverse. I will... Look at this. Look at the... Oh, deep snow. Oh, 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 no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, now I'm worried. I think I'd go forward and back if I were you. Now back real fast. Straight back. <laughs> so even though $20,000 more and you got stuck too. I did get stuck, but it wasn't quite as uh, stuck as you were. But I did get stuck even with mud and snow tires. It just shows you when you got like 5,000 pounds worth of car, you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, know your limits. This is as far as I got, and it's up to my knees, and I'm over 6'1". That's not bad for a car. I don't know very many vehicles that can actually get out of this much snow. I know one car that can get farther, and that would be the Range Rover Sport. I got this far, I'm also up to my knees, and I'm probably two feet farther in the Nathan. Yeah, two feet further for about $20,000 more. Round one, Range Rover Sport. Round two, gas mileage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. You know, when, when you're driving in the snow, you tend to get worse gas mileage. Yes, you but do. here's the interesting really part. Really bad. Really bad. Really the bad. Oh, bad, bad gas mileage. These rovers are known to be pigs, especially the sport. It's the snow, Nathan. It's two for one. 16.1. <laughs> I'm getting 20.3. I think I got that one. Round two, Range Rover Evoke. Evoke. Ladies and gentlemen, this, actually that, is Lick Skillet Road, one of the steepest roads in America. And there is no better test of stability, traction, and snow worthiness of a car than seeing how fast it'll make up this road. But keep this in mind, they have gotten three feet of snow up here in the last few days, so this is now a one-way road. So we are gonna do a timed run to see if the Range Rover Sport or the Evoke is faster, but we're gonna take it somewhat easy because we don't wanna get, well, into an accident. But let's see how fast these two cars can make it up like Skillet Road. And I'm gonna go about as fast as I dare to because it's not only slick, but it's pretty much a one-way road. So are we ready? Tell me when to go. Ready? Cut me off. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Oh yeah, not a lot of wheel spin there. That's the Range Rover Sport sophisticated all-wheel drive system putting power down where it needs to go. It's holding gears because I have it in sport mode. Once again, I don't want to go too crazy fast. 
Oh, listen to the sound of that Jaguar sourced engine. 385 horsepower pushing this beast of a car up this crazy steep and slick road. Oh, you gotta love the sound of that. 6,000 RPM finally shifts up. I am going as fast as I dare. Okay, here comes a very steep turn. This is the one that separates the men from the boys. Look at that, someone's gone off the road here, no doubt. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're going up, I'd say at least 15%. That is floored, that is floored. Come on car, traction control kicking in. I think we're coming to the end. Here we go. Here we go. And I've got the stopwatch. we got the barrels coming up. All right, that was right. Here. Stop. All right, what's the damage? 153.9. 153.9. Now, this is the sporty version of the Range Rover. Let's see how that sexy new Evoque does. You ready for your turn, Nathan? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, good. So are we ready to go? Let's go, Nathan. Keep okay. it on the road, please. Certainly. Three, two, one, go. There he goes. So how does it feel? How does the traction on this car? You know, it's an interesting thing because a lot of people had an issue with Rover building a vehicle like this because essentially it is a car. The all-wheel drive system that they have in here is surprisingly good. The ride is fantastic on the streets. Here, uh, I gotta give it up to Roman's vehicle. First of all, you can see around corners better because you're sitting higher. This is, oh boy. And now we're bogging down because the uh, traction control system in this is really touchy. Come There we go. It's a six-speed automatic transmission. It's got paddle shifters on it, eh, but it does hunt for gears. It's, it, it, the brain is constantly thinking. Here, here's my reasoning with that. The British say, absolutely not, you're fat American. You cannot choose your own gears. We'll do it for you. And we're here. Stop. All right, there you go, dude. Can you read that? It's 2.06. So you went about, oh gosh, well, 15 seconds slower. You know, uh, considering that part where I bogged down, that's actually not too bad. You know, we set out to show that two rovers can be really different and at the same time they are absolutely fantastic when it comes to driving in this white crap. I gotta tell you, I love mine. I do. But, this thing's a tank. <laughs> I tried to do a burnout, but it's just not my thing. You can't do burnouts. You're a sophisticate. You don't do burnouts. Alright, I think we can both agree that this beast is more expensive and probably more off-road and snow-worthy. Absolutely, it is. But, you know what? That Evoke really did kick ass. They're both great. and. I suppose the lesson is, if you're gonna go in the snow, get dedicated snow tires, not quote unquote mud and snow tires that are all season because that's what it's really all about. Yeah, yeah, if you're really serious about going in the white stuff, get snow tires. As always, this is Roman and, and Nathan. See you guys next time on the Fast Lane Car. Let's go! Fast, fast, you're going without me. She was supposed to let me in. Howdy, folks. Yes, I fit. It's not a lot of space. Actually, if you look at it, the way the back tapers, you lose a lot of the utility that you can normally get from an SUV. So if you're looking for space, probably not for you. Here's something interesting, though. The wheelbase is exactly the same with this one as it is with the three-door. So you have a coupe version with just two doors and then four doors. Can you imagine the size of those doors? Come here, I wanna show you one more thing. These are the wheels that receive power. <laughs> That's right. Basically, this is a front wheel drive vehicle with a rear end that can lock in when necessary. It's an interesting system and it works really well. Unfortunately, it's also a $50,000 Rover with a four cylinder engine. That's probably the major detractor because some people just don't want to spend that type of money on this type of car.